Okay, folks, if y'all remember, in committee meetings, people have to wear masks. Leader Beverly looks better. <laughs> I look better too, you know. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm going to start off. Representative Green, would, would you open us with prayer, please, sir? What's your number? You're on. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, as we gather here today, may you be with us and guide us as we do the people's business. And Father, we just thank you for the blessings that thou has placed upon this state, upon its citizens. And Father, we pray for those individuals that are hurting this morning. We pray for those that are in need. And Father, be with us as we go about the daily work of the citizens. Be with us, guide us, and direct us in all things. And we ask all of these in the name of our of the Son. And we ask you to be with us and guide us and direct us in all things. Amen. Thank you, sir. Um, it was referenced about how fragile life is. Um, I'm probably going to make a a little short morning order this morning. Last March, we elected a DOT board member for the third congressional district. The day after he was elected to the board, he was diagnosed with stomach cancer. He passed yesterday afternoon around four o'clock. So, <coughs> He, um, he has a wife and daughter. He, uh, he was one of those, uh, you know, he played football for Auburn, uh, played linebacker. I think he was there when Bo Jackson was there. Um, so he, uh, he was one of those outstanding individuals that um, I was talking to a leader in the Columbus yesterday after he called me and told me about it. And he said he was one of those young guys who was ready to take over leadership in Columbus. And uh, now we're short. So uh, I hope you'll keep uh, his wife and daughter in your prayers. Thank you. And remember, folks, life is kind of fragile. Uh, but as a DOT board member, he impacted this whole state. All right. Representative Dollar, we've got, if y'all remember last uh, Committee on Rules, uh, we sent House Bill 841. We recommitted uh, to governmental affairs and it was passed out that afternoon, um, and it was now it will be heard um, under the modified structure rule. It's House Bill uh, 841. What's your LC number? Okay. Okay, it's LC 471445S. That's the one. Okay, as, as in the past, uh, th this is not a place for debate. If you were wanted to debate this bill, uh, you had ample opportunity in uh, governmental affairs to do so. If you have a question, uh, that's fine, but like I said, this is not a place for debate. All right, Chairman Dollar. Let me find, there you go. Thank you. Um, as mentioned, I'm bringing a House Bill um, 841. It's on the front page near the top. Um, uh, pause for laughter. Um, uh, th this bill is very, very straightforward. It would uh, allow for a referendum uh, for the folks in my area to uh, vote if they want to incorporate. 
And that's the bill, Chairman. A lot of these things have some real strict guidelines they have to follow. And I want to ask uh, Chair Lady Taylor, um, does this legislation provide or meet all the legal requirements for a referendum for the potential creation of a city? Uh, yes, sir, it does. And it went through a debate in the subcommittee and in committee. Um, I will tell you that he listened to some of his folks from home and advice he got, and that's why he made some amendments to it last week. Um, but yes, it met all the qualifications. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Okay, who's number four? Well, Hatchet. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Chairman Dollar, what, what changed between the previous bill and this bill? Uh, the, there, was a, there was a change to, there were two changes. One I would call um, somewhat technical and the other was substantive. Um, the change, uh, one of the changes, um, and it was the intent in the, in the original bill to have the referendum in May um, so that the city could hold its elections um, in, during, the, uh, during the November elections and there wouldn't have to be a special election and it would allow um, those, those people elected to to the council and the mayor to um, to go ahead and be you know getting ramped up in time to uh, for, for for formation if those were to pass. Uh, the other one, um, it, it, it the, the structure was uh, six council members uh, with them electing a mayor amongst themselves, kind of like a chairman, and uh, the, the 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 cityhood committee. Um, uh, that after this passed, it, it got a good bit of attention back home. And they felt that um, it was just a, a, a bit confusing for folks because it, it was it was a new it was a new model. We're not the only ones that were following that model, but um, they requested if we could uh, go to a six council member, just keep the six council member, but add a um, a, a mayor, a, a citywide elected mayor. Um, I should add that all six council members, um, even though they come from specific posts, are also elected uh, citywide. Thank you, sir. Any other questions? Oh, Leader Beverly. I just have a uh, couple of quick questions. One is, if the formation of this particular entity happens, what would the demographics look like? So, you know, right now Cobb County is, demographics are what they are. What would this particular area look like, one? And then secondly, uh, what would the average income be in this particular area that you're talking about? Um, you know, it's, it's a good question and one that I don't know that I could even answer. When, when we were drawing the map, um, uh, re the reapportionment office, um, you know, as they, they drew this map as they drew all maps. Um, I did not look at demographics. I, I did not look at um, ethnicity, race, um, uh, or, or income. Um, I, I have had people tell me what it is, but I, we, we didn't look at it when we drew the map. So I, I don't know that I could. I, I can parrot back to you what has been told to me, but I honestly don't know. Okay, Representative Hughley. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, to uh, Representative Dollar. What effect will this new city have on the finances of the rest of the county that, that will be left as a result? Well, this bill has, um, has been in the works for, uh, this is the fourth year, and the county hasn't come to us with, um, or us hasn't come to me, hasn't come to the committee with, um, with any kind of objection that it would be um, detrimental to them. Um, and that's been over the course of several years. Chairman Taylor. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I will note that a feasibility study was done. The city can support itself, and the opportunity was given for anybody that wanted to do any kind of impact study. Those were told to do it. So, thank you. Thank you. Chairman Smith. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, to the speaker and the well. Um, these, this city, the citizens of this city still will have to pay county taxes, correct? Oh, yes, ma'am. Okay. Yeah, I yeah. thought that needed to be made clear. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, they, they will still be Cobb Countyans. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I see no more questions. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Committee. Well, now I guess it's time to set the calendar for tomorrow. 
Uh, House Bill 841, do I hear a move? move. move. We've got a move and a second. All in favor say aye. aye. All opposed, like sign. Okay, you want to count? Those are opposed, raise your right hand. Opposed? Okay, all in favor, raise your right hand. It passed. House Bill 841 will be on the calendar for tomorrow. It's LC 1445S. Thank y'all, and we'll, hold on one second. Uh, Vice Chair uh, Ballinger. Mr. Chairman, pursuant to House Rule 33.3, .3, I move for debate to be limited to no longer than one hour on all legislation, time to be allocated at the discretion of the Speaker. Okay, we have a motion. I hear a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign. Okay, all in favor, raise your right hand. Okay, all opposed? It carried. So debate will be limited one hour at the discretion of the speaker. Meeting adjourned. <laughs>